Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of ERT. My name is Derek. And I'm Kara. So let's just jump right into it. Obviously the biggest news that's been floating around is, is King Ka going away? So I don't know, what do you think? Is King Ka going away? Who knows, um, by the time we drop this, it might already have happened. But. <laughs> I was gonna say, maybe something will have happened. Um, people are, there's rumors, who knows what's even real, what's true. There's emails, there's messages. I mean, I could Photoshop anything to make it look like anything. So is any of this true? Well, I can say breaking news, as in why by the time you see it, it's not really breaking news, but Six Flags actually just made a sort of statement today. They pretty much said that we will be making a, an announcement on King Ka at a later date. But they did acknowledge something about King Ka. And we do know today that there are demolition permits out for Green Lantern. And uh, it's like their twister ride. Uh, there might be one other attraction I can't remember, but I was saying, those nobody, are... nobody's surprised that Green Lantern is going no. away. That and there, the reason that everyone is assuming something is happening with King Ka is there are markers on the ground. There's markers pointing to different spots, and it looks like there's things pointing to King Ka. Yeah, I don't. Short a little version. I don't think the ride's actually going away per se. I think it's going to get some sort of top thrill two treatment. Will it be by Zamperla? Probably not. Probably not. Intamin <laughs> is what I'm assuming. But I, I just couldn't imagine that you would tear down the current tallest roller coaster in the world. It'll be the tallest roller coaster in the United States. And uh, yeah, I just feel like there's so much potential. I just I, I understand like maintenance wise, but obviously switching it over to LSM going to be completely different. So that's kind of where I'm leaving. But don't plus, know. plus next year is its 20th anniversary. So would you really tear it down on the eve of its 20th anniversary? Yeah, that, that's, who knows? That's, but, not, that's cruel. Wait, do you hear that? <laughs> My super little corny bit. Because we're actually jumping right into a surprise quiz today. So we're going to play <laughs> no. all in theme of King Ka, just as a sort of maybe possible remembrance of King Ka. And we're going to do some quiz on King Ka and... Are you smarter than your average coaster foozy is what oh, I'm going to call this. So I this no is all what for we're doing. What? All the questions are King Ka. So oh, first no. question, in what year did King Ka open? 19 years ago. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> but you got to tell us the date. I have to. Okay, so this is 2024. I'm sorry, I'll give you a multiple choice. Oh, okay. That, okay, yes. 2002, 2003, 2005, or 2007? Uh, it would be 2005. Okay. Good job. I can math. All right. Yay. The next question. So when King Ka opened, it was the world's tallest and fastest roller coaster. What is King Ka's max speed? Mm, is and it? your multiple choices answers okay. will be 118, 120, 130, or 128. I was going to say it's 128. Yes, yes, I, I kind of gave that one away. Well, I, I knew that before you gave me the multiple And choice. next question. So King Ka is taller than Top Thrill, but the real question is, how much taller is it? Oh, see, this is a good question. Mm. So is it 10 feet taller? 16 feet taller? 36 feet taller? Or 43 feet taller? Oh, uh, I don't know. I didn't, I don't think it's that much taller. Um, is it 10 feet taller? No, it's actually, uh, sorry, you got that one wrong. It is 36 wah, wah, wah. feet taller. Top Thrill Dragster or Top Thrill 2 is 420 feet. King Ka is 456 feet. Okay. Now, to even, uh, I guess, lesser in uh, stats, Top Thrill Dragster pulls off a 400 foot drop. King Ka pulls off a drop of how many feet? Less than Not less, but the, the total, feet? how how tall is its drop? Is it 400 feet, 410 feet, 418 feet, or 423 mm. feet? Mm, I have no clue. Because it comes down and it goes, like, and it does the little bunny hill mm. thing. It doesn't matter. It's just how tall from the <laughs> first, that big drop to the bottom. 400 and something. Well, you got to guess the numbers I gave you. I don't remember what numbers you gave well, me. Well, it was, it's 418 feet. So it only <laughs> pulls off a drop that's 18 feet taller and it's eight miles per hour faster. So that was my surprise quiz. Oh. 
At least you got the <laughs> the year it opened correctly. But uh, I got a couple things right. I guess and you didn't tell me that you were going to give me a quiz. I would have studied. Well, that was the whole point. Then it wouldn't really be a pop quiz. <laughs> so do I pass or do I fail? Uh, I don't know. It's, I guess you uh, you skirt by with uh, I don't know. With a solid C, C, I guess. Wow, thank you. Hey, well, you know, that's not too bad. So. So taking into consideration the demise, potential demise of King Daka, do you think that this year has been a terrible year for roller coasters? If you, if you get on Instagram right now, you would think that 2024 was the absolute worst year ever for roller coasters. So in forms of new roller coasters opening, it wasn't like particularly strong. At least, again, we're speaking just the United States. There were some really big roller coasters that yes. opened worldwide, like Hyperia, uh, Voltron. So, yeah. Uh, we don't live over there. Unfortunately, because they look <laughs> amazing. But nonetheless, but here in the States, there wasn't a bunch of like huge. But again, obviously, I think the big, uh, the big coaster was Top Thrill 2, which... Open for a grand total of a week. Of so that kind of was like the starter of where people were kind of getting this bad taste in their mouth of just problems that were happening throughout the year. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of roller coasters that kind of had a rough start. Some were able to get their footing, not top throw two. And others, we thought they were going to open a little bit sooner and they didn't. And there were some roller coasters that were supposed to open and now they got pushed to 2020, 20, I'm sorry, to 2020. 2025. They got pushed all the way back to yes. 2020. So go back in time. <laughs> <clears throat> but what I call it the worst year ever, I think we're obviously over dramatic. There's been years in the past where we really barely even got any new roller coasters. Speaking of 2020. Obviously, we're now more, I guess, uh, glued to our phones with updates and me social media and what's happening and everybody's posting updates on all their roller coasters and rides. There's There has been other pa years in the past where roller coasters have had rocky starts. So, but yeah, was it... It, I guess it just, I think we were all expecting a little bit more out of 2024, and I guess it just didn't hit those, hit the high hopes that we were aiming for. But nonetheless, I would say it's been an okay year. Mm -hmm. I would agree. So what actually opened in 2024? So, of I, well, it looks like we have pretty much like 10 roller coasters that we're looking at here. So we have the All-American Triple Loop at Indiana Beach. We did not go over there. I honestly have no desire to go check out the roller coaster. <laughs> Now, they did, I guess they got rid of the awkward shoulder straps that they had because it looked like that made the ride extremely painful. Everybody said that ride is super janky. So, yeah, that's why I'm not like, Indiana Beach looks like a neat park. I'd really like to check it out. But, again, we didn't make it over there for that. Bobcat, which is a family uh, gravity group roller coaster. So, those are always fun. It's a nice little addition. That was at Six Flags Great Escape. Uh, it looks I've like only cool heard ride. positive results, but yes. again, I guess it's family coaster. You know what you're getting, and it, they're they're good rides. They're good solid rides. Uh, Fire in the Hole at Silver Dollar City. That was the remake of the original Fire in the Hole that has now been done by Rocky Mountain Construction. I mean, the ride looks good. It looks like the same exact ride. I mean, <laughs> like looking that at the POV, look much changed. they obviously had some enhanced effects or whatnot. But yeah, it's just now instead of the one section of the park, it's been moved over into that like. Uh, the fireman's alley or whatever. Landing? It's, I think yeah, it's called fireman's, fireman's landing. landing right? That sounds about right. Yeah. That makes so much more sense. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, nonetheless, solid ride. You know what you're getting. I mean, it sounds like you really know what you're getting. And um, <clears throat> good gravy at Holiday World. That is a family Vacoma boomerang roller coaster. The ride looks okay. The theming looks very unique and quirky, especially for Holiday World. It's themed to gravy. <laughs> Fits so, in well. Yeah. Uh, it's all in the Thanksgiving uh, section of the park, so you, you get what you're getting. Uh, Iron Menace at Dorney Park. That's probably the most successful launched roller coaster this year. It opened with the park at the beginning of the year. You mean opening roller coaster? Yes. Like it's it not a launching roller coaster. It and stayed open. No, it's not the, a launching roller coaster. Well, that's coaster. what it it's sounded It's a dive like. coaster. Yes. I have my own problems with a ride. I think <laughs> it's really shaky, but nonetheless... Then we have Penguin Trek at SeaWorld Orlando. We did make it on that one as well. Mm -hmm. It's a fun family launch roller coaster. Again, I still say it kind of has like this shaky thing, which is a whole nother B and M. We talked about that already, but moving on. It fits in well at SeaWorld. Yeah, it was. It was. It fills a gap that SeaWorld definitely yeah. needed. SeaWorld definitely needed that family coaster. So again, it's not like a 
uh, knock your socks off kind of a ride, but it wasn't really intended for that. It's filling in that gap that mm -hmm. SeaWorld needed. We have Phoenix Rising at Busch Gardens, Tampa. We didn't get the ride because they were just testing it the day that we were there. So don't know what that's all about. It seems, yeah, I don't know why. It seems like the rides had a little bit of problem, but I don't know. It so, opened like six weeks before. Yeah, it opened we like in went July. To I think, Bush Gardens, Tampa. Which is still a very late opening for a roller coaster in Florida. But nonetheless, it's a family inverted roller coaster. Nothing again. I, that's just saying, I think you're kind of getting the trend. A lot of these rides are very on the mild side. And then we have Snoopy's Soapbox Racers at Kings Island. That's another Vacoma Boomerang roller coaster. Very mild. I actually was surprised how mild it was. I kind of put it like a step up from their kitty coaster there. And maybe even actually a step down from the uh, uh, Woodstock Express. I mean, it's just very smooth. It looks like it would be a lot more, when I say a lot more intense, a lot more intense than you would think as for a kid coaster, but I it's mean, fine. When I, I, I just think about putting Leander on it, our little dude who isn't super excited about riding roller coasters yet, even though he is tall enough to ride it, it would be way too much for him to ride. I, well, yeah, because he doesn't seem to like to want to ride any roller coaster. He but, only likes the littlest of littlest roller coasters. And then we move on to another family roller coaster, Snoopy's Tender Paw Twister Coaster at Knott's Berry Farm. Did that actually open already? It says, according to our CDB, it opened in the summer. Oh, That's what it says. Okay. Because I looked it up, I, so I was like, really? Did this open? I, I thought it was announced this year. I don't know. We were there last year. I don't know. It's all kind of blended together. But if it's open, great. Whatever. I don't know. I, I guess we should have checked that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just another kitty coaster. So I haven't seen anything on that ride. So I guess that's why, other than just like the preview when it was announced and I haven't heard or seen anything since. So. But it's a kitty coaster. And then finally, Top Thrill 2 at Cedar Point. The roller coaster opened with a bang and then just died. So, <laughs> just died. Yeah, I mean, it's, the ride was great. I mean, I, I would still say the ride is great. I'm not, I know everybody's like, oh, the ride's such a failure. Yes, it had a, it obviously had a very rocky launch. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not a rocky launch, but a rock, rocky start, because I'll make you think the, the launch was But bad. it's never finished either. Like, no. it's closed the whole summer. Yeah, and the reason why I don't really call it a failure yet, I think it's really going to come down to 2025. If 2025, the rise still proves to be very problematic, then I'll say it's a failure. Yes. However, this was kind of like a... In some ways, a prototype for Zamperla. Zamperla. They're trying something new, especially with LSM launch going to 120 miles per hour. These new uh, prototype style wheels and everything, which I think that seems to be what the issue is. And I, I think what these problems are fixed, are resolved, I think the ride is going to be actually operating quite, uh, quite efficiently better than what Top Thrill Dragster ever was. Hopefully. So. What's really weird, if you go to RCDV, and you click on the new for 2024, and it gives you the list. Top Thrill 2 is not on that list. Do they move it to 2025? If you go to the new for 2025 list, it's not on that list either. Do they just have it listed as SBNO? I don't know. Most likely. It's they probably have it listed as gone. SBNO because just nobody knows when exactly it's going to open. But So, yeah, that was 2024, like I said, here in the States anyways. Kind of mild, but a couple good ones in there. So, for... Uh, oh, yeah. So now let's talk about the roller coasters that were supposed to open this year, but didn't. Uh, I already talked about Top Thrill 2. That ride technically did open. It did open. We rode it. So we it did, did ride open. it. So uh, we got on the ride. Great roller coaster. Amazing. Just, we should operate more. Uh, Flash Vertical Velocity at Six Flags Great Adventure. They didn't even start construction until like June, which is like typical Six Flags, I guess. And they kind of just stopped. Like the ride looked like it was more or less complete and they just stopped. And then now this past couple of weeks, they've been testing the roller coaster and it's anticipated open now in 2025. But very weird. I just, but yeah. Next we have Georgia Surfer at Six Flags Over Georgia. I kind of keep forgetting about this roller coaster <laughs> too, but yeah, they have, it's, a, it's another shuttle launch roller coaster by Intamin. Looks kind of interesting. I should be like a fun ride. But yeah, I, I don't Whenever even know. I'm not 100% sure if they ever finished like construction of this ride. I'm not really sure how far along it is. But it's anticipated for next year. And then we have the two roller coasters coming to the Mattel Adventure Park out in Arizona, uh, Glendale, Arizona. They were aiming for the end of 2024, but since we are uh, in November, 
I have family out there and they actually just drove by like a week ago and the track's not even complete. So pretty uh, pretty certain the ride's not going to open this year. I, <laughs> I mean, was going to say, it seems like like the Mattel Park in Arizona is like a small park. We It probably wouldn't even be on our radar, but we have family that live very close and we're going to visit them in a few weeks. Well, so it we would were, still be on my radar. I we don't know if we really would head hoping. to it. But yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll get to it eventually. It does look like fun, but yeah, you have Hot Wheels Twin Mill Racer and you have Hot Wheels Bone Shaker, the is it's called the ultimate ride that's we that's have right what here. It's called. But uh the uh bone shaker, that's more of like the family coaster as far as I understand. And then the twin mill racer, I think, is the uh I believe that's a launching roller coaster. I, I honestly kind of got it a little mixed up on that, but I know the one has inversions and some airtime and whatnot, and the other one is just more of a family-friendly roller coaster. They're both by chance rides, which if you all been on Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom. Fantastic roller coaster. So I have really high hopes for these two roller <laughs> yes, coasters. I think they'll be hopes. good. And also, there is also well, that Nickelodeon Slime Street. Uh, wow, I had tongue twisters for me today. Nickelodeon Slime Streak at uh, American Dream Mall, the Nickelodeon Universe Park. That roller coaster is it's a family coaster, but that's also built by Chance Rides. It's a oh, solid family I thought, coaster. I'm like, what are we talking about? That coaster has been open for a while. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. are we adding that's it to a, this? That's list? another chance ride. So, like again, I feel like these will two will be two solid roller coasters. Mm -hmm. So that's 2024. Let's talk about 2025. What are you most excited about in 2025? Alpen Fury. Alpen, you know, I can kind of agree with that. And that's actually, since we're going alphabetical, that is the first one up on the list. But that Alpen ride does Fury look incredible. at Canada's Wonderland. It's a very unique launching roller coaster. It will have nine inversions. It just has the one launch, but it's going to go through the that volcano mountain structure. Looks pretty cool. Airtime again, like I said, nine inversions. It just looks like a twisted mess. I it's guess very the best unique. Way to put it. It's not like anything else that's out there. So, Canada's Wonderland is definitely on our list of parks that we have to visit next year. We have never been there. Yeah. So, that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely looking forward to heading up to Canada's Wonderland next year. I mean, it's only like five hours away for us. So, yeah, we'll check it out. Uh, next, we have Beach Rescue Racer at SeaWorld San Antonio. Norm, I wouldn't even kind of bring it up. It's just a uh, like a little kitty family coaster. So there's that. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> Big Bad Wolf, The Wolf's Revenge, which is kind of a long name, but at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This is their new family inverted roller coaster that's going to go... Kind of behind Verbolton, where I guess Drakenfire used to be back in that area. And it looks like they're obviously giving homage to Big Big Bad Wolf. Looks like it'll be a decent ride. I mean, they're, they're calling it the world's longest family inverted coaster. Like, I didn't know that was really a thing. My only concern is I hope it operates with two trains because Phoenix, mm. uh, uh, Phoenix Rising can only operate with one train. And if this is, you know, almost 3,000 feet, I hope it has two trains. But don't know yet. We'll find out. But I think it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, Should yeah. Should be good. Next, we have Fire Runner at Lost Island Theme Park. And I believe this is their single rail roller coaster that they are building. Uh, this is a clone to uh, the Wonder Woman lasso. Do you know what I mean? Next, we got Quantum Accelerator. So I guess we aren't going in alphabetical order. I thought we were going in alphabetical <laughs> order. Quantum Accelerator at Six Flags New England. It's another one of those... Uh, family launch roller coasters by Intamin where it's like you kind of sit on like the motorbike kind of style. Mm -hmm. It's like a normal seat, but they have the handles there that make you feel like you're like riding a moped or not a moped, but yeah, a moped. <laughs> Yay. A motorcycle. But actually it is, you would, I think it would be closer to a moped, but yeah, nonetheless, looks like a decent ride. Uh, the other big coaster I think we're all kind of looking forward to is Raptera at King's Dominion. Yes. It's another launching wing roller coaster the only one that we have is thunderbird at holiday world we really like that one we love that ride this one looks good uh maybe i don't know if i'm like again it's it's too early to tell you about the layout i think there's probably gonna be a couple surprise elements on there that i think some people are kind of sleeping on but nonetheless i think this will be a solid addition there for king's dominion yes and a surprise announcement we have a tilt coaster coming to cedar point nobody saw this coming at all uh, Siren's Curse, that ride looks to be fantastic. I mean, I think the layout looks very solid. Again, this ride, capacity-wise, might be a little bit on the shorter side for Cedar Point. But, yeah, I mean, 
I can't argue about having another roller coaster three hours away. So happy with that one. And uh, so yeah, this one I you want to try pronouncing? I always keep getting it wrong. It's the wrath of Rakshasa. Ra rock Rakshasa. That's it. Rakshasa. Rock. <laughs> Why Raksha did they name it then? I don't know. Oh my goodness. I'll have to take a class on how, learning it's how to say it. It's the Wrath of Rakshasa. Yes. I think. It's another dive coaster by b and uh, Doesn't really get me out of bed. Uh, <laughs> that's just, yeah, that's my, it looks like it'll be a fun, solid ride for Six Flags Great America. Hopefully we'll make it out there this that, uh, in 2025. That'd be a good excuse to finally get out that way. But yeah, it is Excuse me. It is what it is. And then um, there's two kind of, I, I guess, because there's some parks opening as well. But there's two major parks that are opening that have their own slate of roller coasters. And I think that's the one that everybody is going to be talking about is Epic Universe, for sure. They have a slew of roller coasters. The Star Roller Coaster, which is ironically called Stardust Racers. That's a mock multi-launching racing roller coaster Looks to be fantastic. Amazing. They're already touting like this insane capacity. The ride looks, we've already seen some footage of the ride testing. It looks awesome. It looks incredible. Yeah, should be. A, it's going to be a great roller coaster. I'm already saying it's probably going to be a great roller coaster. But there's a few other roller coasters in that park too we can't pass over. There's that Curse of the Werewolf, which is like a family spinning roller coaster. It looks like it has like a swing launch section to it as well. And obviously some intricate theming because obviously epic universe looks the theming looks insane epic <laughs> yeah we have the hiccups wing gliders which is an intimate family multi-launch roller coaster but more similar to i guess you could say like the style of like cheetah hunt but with the newer style restraints mm -hmm. i think it looks like a solid again solid roller coaster great theming it's not going to knock your socks off like intensity wise again family coaster but it's going to be great it's so much fun there is, and then I think the one that, out of all these coasters, which we know it's not going to be intense, but the one that's going to really grab everybody's attention is going to be that Minecart Madness. Is that actually what it's called? That's what it says on RCDB. But okay. I, I thought it was like Donkey like Kong was Donkey in the name Kong. or something. But nonetheless, it's this Minecart. The Donkey Kong coaster. Which it is looks like you're riding on one track, but in fact, the roller coaster is operating by a track below that you can't really see. So... The theming aspect of this ride is going to look crazy, and just hopefully the coaster itself turns out to be a fun ride experience. I mean, it looks again, it's another family coaster, looks solid, but yeah, the whole the park as a whole is just going to be amazing. I doubt it we're going to make it there this year. I I just I'm already kind of writing it off just because of the you only can as of right now you can only go to the park you can buy a ticket that's a multi day pass, but you can only go to Epic Universe once. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you need like two days minimum to enjoy this park. Three days minimum. I mean, because there's so much to do, so many dark rides. I want to do it all. <laughs> and I highly doubt you're going to be able to fit it all into that one day. So, yeah, I, I guess we'll we'll just have to kind of. But I, this park is going to be packed. Oh, I, it's this park be is going to be slammed. Universal as a whole is oh, yeah. just going to be packed. They're, they're totally ago. winning 2025. <laughs> Even if they might not have the best coaster, which again, that. Stardust Racers looks fantastic. I still really am leaning towards that Alpen Fury because I think it just looks like so much fun. But yeah, as a whole, Epic Universe is going to be insane. I mean, the other thing I think about with Epic Universe and the reason that I'm okay skipping it next year is because our kids are kind of on the line as to whether they would like it or not. They would like certain aspects of it. They would love the How to Train Your Dragon in the Nintendo world. But the other parts, they wouldn't understand the Harry Potter stuff, and they wouldn't like the monster section at all. Which I'm actually really looking forward to the monster <laughs> section. I'm not a huge, like, horror movie kind of guy, but I like that classic because it's, yeah, like, Frankenstein, monsters. Uh, werewolf. And, like, they even have, like, that... Uh, the was it? I think it is from Frankenstein. There's the giant uh, windmill, and I guess like every 15 minutes or something, this windmill like catches on fire. Like I guess like how it did in the old classic movie or whatnot. I mean, it's universal. So it, that looks pretty cool. I mean, just everything about that section of the park looks amazing. That dark ride look looks great. Well, but here's the thing. I feel like if we 
somehow went to Universal in 2025. Our kids would not want to be anywhere near that section of the park. And that's where we would want to be because we would want to go check it out. Oh, yeah. And so we would be split and it would be a rough day. So I feel like if we wait until maybe 2026, our kids would be two years older and they would probably appreciate some of this a little bit more and we would have a better experience as a family. But honestly, even if we went in 2025, realistically, like I said, time-wise, I don't even think we would have time to go over to that section of the well, park. that might be true if too. If you spend the time, because the, the kids are going to love Nintendo Land and they're going to be stuck over there for the whole time because it's like Nintendo World and Donkey Kong Country. So, and then obviously you have a couple of the other rides like Stardust Racers and we're, we obviously we sort of casually brought it up at the How to Train Your Dragon area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All that stuff alone, like, and we haven't even, like I said, between those two, you still haven't even mentioned the the Dark Universe and the Harry Potter. I think uh, I think that's it of those. The Ministry of Magic section, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's, but again, each of these have like attractions, like, and you're gonna want to spend time looking at the scenery and waiting. Well, and, yeah, there'll be food yeah. and there'll be shops to go into and all the things, and like I would want to go spend time in the Harry Potter section because I like that. And you're gonna want to go spend time in the monster section and our kids. Well, I'm gonna, gonna want to spend time cry. in the Harry Potter section too. I mean, I think it looks very, very interesting. I don't. I, I if there's one section of the park I really don't know much about is the Harry Potter. I haven't. I guess I just haven't paid much attention on that. But I. I seem to know more about the Dark Universe, the How to Train Your Dragon, and the uh, Nintendo World. But yeah, I'm sure it's still going to be great. And finally, there there is another park. It is Coda Land. <laughs> this park has been announced. I don't know. I feel like it's the whole. I, I don't know. They've been announced since like what 2021. I was going to say, this I, park has been on your list forever. It keeps bouncing, but they have officially started construction on Circuit Breaker, which is going to be a tilt coaster. It was supposed to be the first tilt coaster in the U.S., but Siren's Curse could very well beat them. I don't know. It we'll, will. We'll see, depending on how park. Now, they also have another coaster, it's the Palindrome, and I think the ride has completed its major construction. I think they have, you know, like some of the other small things to do with a ride. But that's done. But it's this new park that's part of this uh, Coda Land, which is like a racetrack of mm -hmm. some sort. So, yeah, I have no idea if it's going to open next year. I have, But at least they're it's one of those parks I thought like after it didn't open in the first year and then it opened in the next year. I was like, I think they're just kind of giving up. But the fact that now parts keep showing up and they're still building. So <laughs> I feel like it's going to happen. It's just when I don't know. So yeah, 2025 looks to be a great year. I guess circling back to our main question, what we said earlier, was 2024 a bust? In some ways, yes, but I just kind of feel like it's like an off year. There was a lot of weird problems. I think it just caught a lot, caused a lot of disappointment, including obviously the most recent with King De Ka maybe getting closed. And like I said, it looks like Green Lantern is definitely done. Uh, which, I don't know, obviously we had the big Cedar Fair Six Flags merger, and I think some people are a little upset and saying that, like, Six Flags, the new management is here destroying. But at the same time, I'm, how do you say it? Six Flags Great Adventure, I feel like, has so much potential with that property. you got to think about where it's located. It is right next to New York City mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. I don't know if it's, like, the most populated section of the country or if not it's got to be up there for sure there's a ton of people in that small area between within an hour and a half drive of this park that park has so much potential it really needs to go to the next level of like a resort which it's not there's like the nearest hotel is like 15 minutes or something from there which is really odd so yeah there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen there that really take this place to the next level which is why i think some of the rides need to go I understand the whole thing with King Da Ka. Again, I, they're saying it costs over a million dollars to operate, which is insane. Maybe you do need to shut it down and either it is saving it a la like Top Thrill 2 style, which again, I know everybody's like, we don't want that to happen because our ride's a failure. Again, I'm not saying Top Thrill 2 yet is a failure. I will tell you if it's a failure next year because there are coasters that just have a bad year launch. We've seen it with other coasters in the past and they're able to bounce back from that, especially when it's something... To this extreme. So, yeah. yeah, it's just an off year. I'm not. I'm still not worried about the Cedar Fair Six Flags merger. I really do think that they're just going in and they're they're chopping budgets. They're they got to make themselves profitable and they got to focus on what makes them profitable and hopefully start putting enhancements. So I know it sounds like they're descaling a park, but if you ask me, I think they're just gutting all the all of the junk 
and hopefully we'll be start putting in some <laughs> better and advanced. I don't want to say King to Cop per se is junk, junk, but Green Lantern Way to go. Is. Well, uh, yes. But you get what I'm saying is you got to, sometimes you got to let certain things go so you can move it into the right direction. And that park just, I really love Six Flags Great Adventure. I think yeah. it's one of my favorite Six Flags parks, but it does have a lot of weird quirkiness to that property that they kind of need to work on. So it I needs think that's, some updates. It needs freshened up. Yeah, which I guess they have been doing this year. We haven't been there this year, but I have heard that they have been doing some enhancements. But even the way the park laid out is really strange, too. It's just like one giant long line, mm -hmm. I guess. So, and then obviously I think there's rumors of maybe actually building a hotel resort or something right on that property, which they desperately need. So... I'm not looking at this as a negative thing. I'm looking as this should be a positive thing. And I feel like the Six Flags, the new Six Flags Entertainment is wanting to invest money into this property. I know it might not seem like it, but if you're willing to gut these amount of attractions, I think they're they're looking to do some major uh, enhancements. Yeah, if you're going to take it away, I think what they're going to give back it's going to yeah. be really awesome. So, yeah, 2024, even if you think it was a bad year, guess what? 2025 is right around the corner. I think it's going to be a better year, and there will be some more great roller coasters happening. And, yeah, but that's pretty much all I have. I agree. So, well, thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Extreme Thrills. Bye.